Thank you. Can everyone hear me OK? I am a, a writer really now by profession, so um, I can be very softly spoken. Uh, if I start speaking too softly, uh, then please just go like this. I know you're an Asian audience, but you can still do it. Um, OK, so I just had this lovely introduction here, but perhaps some of you uh, should know a little bit more about my background and why I'm involved in this. So I was a famous teenage computer hacker in Australia and a long-term activist and I've been reading General's emails since I was 17. After uh, some famous cases where I had a, a magazine that I wrote and it was involved uh, in, in a, a prosecution in Australia and uh, six years uh, in court, um, I went on to do other things. I mean, I wrote books and I did some documentaries and uh, lots of human rights work, lots of cryptography work. Some of you may uh, know Strobe, so I invented uh, parallel uh, port scanning. Um, if you're using Postgres, you're using my code. If you're using FreeBSD, NetBSD, uh, or a Mac, you're using my code. But after a while, I decided I would go and do something else. And so I entered into the academy and into the ivory tower and started to do theoretical physics. And what I thought I would create was a, a world that was mathematically pure for myself, that had a, a good history, a good intellectual history, and possibly a good intellectual future. And that was in some way honest work. But what I found, being an academic, was that no part of the economy anywhere in the world is isolated, including the highest part of the ivory tower. That in fact, at the bottom of every ivory tower rests corrupt money, rests the bodies of people killed in war. And in my particular case, I found that the quantum cryptography group was being, in Australia, was being financed by the National Security Agency, that the applied mathematics group in Australia was designing mathematical models to build an enhanced version of the grizzly plow. That's a high speed military bulldozer designed to bury people alive. And many more things like that. So not even in this highest reach of the ivory tower uh, can you avoid the fact that the world is completely connected. When government is illegitimate, government taints everything beneath it, every aspect of the economy, every person in a country including those most removed, including pure mathematicians. In fact, if you look on WikiLeaks, you'll see an article I wrote analyzing 3,600 academic papers that had been financed overtly or covertly by the National Security Agency. Google for MDA 904, the grant code used by the Maryland Procurement Office, a cover name, a light cover name, for the National Security Agency. Google for grant code MDA 903, a cover code used by the Defense Intelligence Agency, funded many, many so-called pure papers of academic research. The CIA has funded papers supposedly by anthropologists and people interested in stress covertly to determine the most efficient way to torture people. Nowhere is free from the illegitimacy of corrupt, morally or financially corrupt government. So having discovered this and also having many journalistic friends and uh, activist friends, we decided to do what we could to make government and organizations more legitimate.
what we had seen as journalists is that there were two sorts of political reform that happen in society. One, something that is part of a tide of change that happens because a, in, uh, a new invention is introduced into the society or a new form of uh, commerce or environmental change. That seems to happen anyway, organically, and there's nothing we can do about it. And it may be positive and it may be negative. But there are other aspects of reform that don't have to happen. Sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. And those parts of reform are seeded and created by unauthorized disclosures. A good one third of the front of the front of the New York Times on any day is built out of unauthorized disclosures. You won't see it. You'll just see documents seen by the New York Times. Or you'll see a senior official speaking, confidenti speaking confidentially says something. And that's really the big driving force for political reform all across the world, is individuals who know of an unjust plan or an unjust past, revealing it to the population, so all the people in the population can decide to support or not support those people or their opponents, not just in democracies, but in all countries. So what is WikiLeaks? OK, the group of people, activists and journalists, cryptographers who came together, we call them Sunshine Press. We have a platform on the internet, our most famous platform, and that is called WikiLeaks. So we do something relatively simple. We want to enable information to go out to the public that is not just any information, but that it has the greatest chance of achieving political reform, positive political reform in the world. There's a lot of bits everywhere in the world. Some of those bits are special. Some of those bits can achieve something good. And the more bits there are in the world, the more the problem becomes, how do you find those bits which can change our civilization into a better state? So we look for an economic signal, a color on those bits, which is that they are restricted. That someone understands those bits, the people who created them. That's who understands them the best. And they have restricted them from the public because they understand that when that material is released, it makes it harder for them to carry out unjust plans because those plans will be opposed. Or if they have carried out such plans in the past, the anger from the discovery will cause people to take away some of their power. Okay. So to get things to the public, you need to protect sources who want to disclose, and you also need to protect your ability to publish in the face of attack. And people like to say that the internet is a place of free speech. Nothing could be further from the truth. What the internet has allowed is publishers to publish cheaply. And with that vast influx of new publishers, some of those publishers are motivated uh, to protect what they are publishing. But in general, the internet is the easiest place to censor. You can't take a paper back from a library, not very easily. But you can do it on the internet, no problem at all. You can censor commercially on the internet by driving publishers away from ISPs. So, Protecting publishing on the internet is not something that comes about as a product of the internet itself. It needs something extra. We don't publish everything because there's too much to